Good evening and welcome to Prime Business. My name is Emma Davis. I look at our stories. Retail business operator Melcom is making a case for the Ghana Revenue Authority to quicken the pace in capturing all businesses under the electronic value-added tax system. This is to eliminate discrimination in tax payments and to help governments rake in more revenue. Group Managing Director for Melcom, Ramesh Sabwani made the appeal after opening a new branch inside the West Hill Small at Weja in Accra. There's more in this report. Melcom has been one of the retail centers used for the pilot of the electronic value added tax known as the EVAT system when it was introduced last year. This has helped the Ghana Revenue Authority in exceeding the revenue target for the year. Speaking to journalists after opening the new branch of the West Hills Mall to cater for the population in the Wager Enclave, Group Managing Director Ramash Sabwane called for a fair system to capture all retail dealers. Every till receipt, every uh, purchase is made is measured and directly connected to the GRA computers so all the tills here every morning is synchronized with them all the trades are all the transactions are uploaded to them they reconcile every evening they reconcile every month so they know that everything is being done fair and square and straightforward they need to roll this out to other retailers also um, it becomes very difficult where Consumers who are paying the 21.9% or whatever it may be as VAT to retailers like us and other retailers, I'm not saying we're the only one on that platform, but there are smaller ones, independents, who have not yet got to that stage. Now, how much of that is actually being tapped and captured and how much is falling through the net is where they need to focus. Melcom's strategic decision to establish a premium outlet within the West Hills Mall is a testament to its commitment to accessibility and convenience. Ramaj Sabwani has also been speaking on plans to introduce more local products when the market demands becomes increasingly available. We are buying a lot of products from local factories. We have a lot of tie-ups with local factories promoting their products. We have an annual Made in Ghana promotion to help promote local industry. So a lot of effort is going on that direction. So are we likely to see an increase in your, your sale of local products? Well, that With over 30 shops, the West Hills Mall has become a soft after destination for shoppers catering for their various needs. The Institute of Climate and Environmental Governance has expressed concern about the implementation of the emission levy, which is expected to start from today, February 1. According to the Institute, the introduction of the emission levy will increase the operational costs of motorists and industries. Here's more in this report. Despite the progressive nature of the levy, the Institute of Climate and Environmental Governance is concerned about the apparent lack of commitment by the government beyond the imposition of the levy to investing the expected revenue on financing green infrastructure. Based on the analysis of the act, it said there is no stated portfolio established to use the revenue generated to finance the country's energy transition efforts. Nonetheless, it believes that the introduction of this levy is crucial for Ghana's energy transition agenda in attaining net zero target and would align with both environmental objectives and the socio-economic well-being of the citizens and industries in Ghana. The Institute also disagreed with the taxation approach on motor vehicles, buses and coaches, saying this makes it unjust for low polluters to pay the same rate as high polluters. It's recommended to government to consider setting up an emission fund to ensure a proper accountability mechanism that guarantees judicious allocation of funds generated. Now, only 15% of farms in Ghana are commercialized. That's according to Synergy Global Holdings. Its report on creating agriculture financing schemes for sustainable agriculture and food security also revealed that only 4% of total banks lend in Ghana went into agriculture in the last five years. Here's more. The report said low mechanization, poor farm record keeping, poor rural transportation infrastructure, Post-harvest losses, among others, are the core challenges affecting the agriculture sector performance and hindering finance for the sector. Typically, 
agriculture portfolios are thin for all financial groups. Considering the existing funding gaps, the report said more interventions are expected from funds and financial institutions, especially the Agriculture Development Bank and Ghana Exim Bank, whose core mandates include providing funding to actors in the agriculture value chain. In the wake of climate change, the report also warned of the rising food security risk in the country. Ghana is one of the top 10 countries impacted severely by climate change despite contributing the least to global warming. The country saw an unprecedented rise in food prices from 2022 evidenced by the National Food Price Index, which increased by 23.8% in 2022. Ghana Cocoa Board has allayed fears of a potential shortfall of supply of cocoa beans to artisanal processing companies. According to its Deputy Chief Executive, Ray Ankara, it is determined to increase the supply of cocoa beans to the artisanal processing companies to boost domestic production and consumption within this year. He spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the Ghana Chocolate Week celebration in Accra. Ghana Cocoa Board, in collaboration with the Ghana Tourism Authority and the other industry stakeholders, have launched the 2024 National Chocolate Week. This week-long celebration is on the theme, Eat Chocolate, Stay Healthy, Grow Ghana, and aims to shine a spotlight on Ghana's iconic cocoa, a key commodity and beloved treat. According to the Deputy Chief Executive of the Ghana Cocoa Board, Ray Ankara, the company is determined to increase the supply of beans to the artisanal processing companies this year. We are saying to all Ghanaians that Cocoa Board is here to support the processing companies to produce more chocolate, more consumption, so that we can drive up jobs, and particularly even with the artisanal chocolatiers. Uh, a decision has been taken in order to lighten the burden they get in trying to get cocoa beans, we've decided that a policy decision has been taken to ensure that these uh, chocolatiers can buy beans directly from uh, Ghana Cocoa Board. This is a step in the right direction. It's a huge one. This will ensure that they can get the beans, their costs will come down, and they can produce a lot more chocolate in the system and create more jobs for our youngsters. Seth Ejeba is the board chairman of the Ghana Tourism Authority. Uh, if you talk about the genesis of Ghana, cocoa is Ghana, Ghana is cocoa. And for us to be able to get the needed revenue to develop our country, there's a need for us to consume what we produce. That is why we are encouraging that uh, about 40% of our cocoa beans is being processed, or we add value to it in Ghana. That will help us to get enough needed revenue. The head of public relations at Cocoa Board, Fifi Boafo, reaffirmed their commitment to dealing with the impact of Galamse. We admit that there have been some challenges. Uh, you talked about Galamse. Galamse is uh, overtake, uh, taking away some cocoa farms. But what we are preventing is to make sure that we do not have chemicals uh, polluting or contaminating the cocoa we have. So far, there is no evidence that uh, the cocoa we are producing, its quality has reduced. It remains the best quality cocoa produced in the whole world. And we are something we jealously guard and we shall continue to protect the quality beans we produce in the world. The National Chocolate Week celebration will be marked with a series of activities from the 9th to the 14th of February 2024 at the Tetequashi Interchange in Accra. Away from agriculture, the Ghana Telecoms Chamber has advised mobile money vendors whose SIM cards have been blocked to work towards linking their Ghana cards to their accounts for reactivation. The telecoms regulator has stated that blocking such SIM cards to enable the Ghana uh, Revenue Authority to collect taxes for the state. Already, Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana says about 60% of its members will be affected. Speaking to Joy Business, the CEO of the chamber, Dr. Kenashibe, said the only way out is to register the SIM to be reconnected. The communication about linking SIM cards did not start with the chamber. Mm. The communication about linking SIM cards started in January 2022, when the policy statement was made by the ministry. So the statement that the, the chamber issued on uh, a few days ago 
was basically reminding all of us that the 31st day that we are talking about had come. And, you know, so if anybody, and again, so that's why I say that if it is that people did not get the communication right, as we speak, you know, if you go to any of the EMIs with your Ghana card, you would be able to get your SIMs connected. And then you, you, your, your, your accounts would be put back again. We should bear in mind that the alternative for that is to say that all agents who do not have their, their SIM cards connected and their SIMs connected, it would mean that the, the, the exemption that you get from the law will not be applicable. And that's not something you want to do. And then it brings about all the complexity. We should also bear in mind, this linkages and all of that deals with some of the challenges with uh, fraud and all the things that we are calling on. So there's a policy intent. And so for me, that's why I say that we, uh, the EMI should make all the efforts to make sure that anybody who has been blocked and provides the Ghana card and all of that, it will be speedily dealt with. But the Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana is appealing for an extension to synchronize their Ghana cards or TIN with their accounts. Joshua Edwardson is a National Deputy PRO for Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana. Nationwide exercise. And uh, as early as uh, 7 a.m. today, we started having uh, calls uh, from our members all across the breadth and length of the country uh, complaining of their things uh, being blocked. And uh, sincerely, as you can see, I am even at uh, one of the uh, uh, MTN's office in Tema myself to, you know, personally uh, experience exactly what is going on. So, indeed, the exercise has started, and uh, it is very, very difficult. It's a very challenging one, and something that uh, we don't wish for because a lot of agents have their money still blocked on their sims, and uh, it's, it's been very, very difficult. I would say that our president was even a little bit magnanimous with respect to the figures because uh, currently, if you look at what is going on, it's, it's far more than that. Okay, it's far more than that because of some underlying factors that, you know, uh, the electronic uh, uh, money issuers are already aware of. It. You're already aware of the of the of the of the, of the prevailing challenges. The issue is that you have some of the agents who are using uh, uh, accounts that are all not in their names. You have some that are having genuine problems with their Ghana card issuance. You have some uh, that are also uh, facing challenges with respect to, uh, uh, you know, uh, the registration process. Because, and until these issues are met, sincerely, I mean, the, the, the exercise cannot be complete. Because we shouldn't forget that whatever it is, these agents are, are running businesses. The Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors has stated that the presence of Centio Oil Refinery will go a long way to reduce the cost they incur when importing petroleum products. Chief Executive of the Chamber, Dr. Patrick Kwekofori, tells Joy Business the refinery comes in handy. From uh, when I received the call for this interview, a few background checks that we are already aware of from some of our members, if for nothing at all, Already, uh, most of our members are buying in CDs from them, which somehow reduces uh, their risk with regards to the uh, forest uh, issues that we uh, that have bedeviled the sector for some time. So that gives us some form of comfort with regards to that. The issue of uh, demorages that normally has also been a thorn in the uh, in the flesh of the importers, I think this is also something that is coming down. With the other uh, benefits that we seek to gain with regards to uh, insurance, insurance and then other uh, fleet charges that normally goes into the supplier's premium. These are costs that uh, you can easily uh, get rid of when you are dealing with that. And even if it's being passed on with regards to the crude, because there are multiple products coming from the crude, it is spread thin that you know any particular buyer will not necessarily feel the impact of that. And basically, as is explained, or, or the, uh, the concept of economies of scale. So these are other opportunities that it brings. But Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Consumers Ghana, Duncan Amwa, disagrees. He believes reviving tour is surest bet in attaining energy security. Is Central really coming to step up to be able to uh, employ the Ghanaian technical hand? What I can put on record this afternoon 
is that go to the control room of Central and it's full of the Chinese, uh, 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 I mean, technicians. And so in, in one breath, Central could also help the market, but in another, job security for the technical people, uh, the operation people at all, you cannot guarantee that as far as the private refinery is concerned. All they right. would, of course, do whatever will benefit their numbers. And for me, the earlier we think of getting tall back to work, the better it will be. Otherwise, if the market becomes a monopolistic market that only dealt with a foreign, I mean, owned refinery, whose interest right, largely would have to be profit, uh, I'm not quite certain that the petroleum security you are looking for uh, you won't get it. Not long ago, the transporters were up in arms. The vertical integration fear that once Sento becomes the only player as far as the refining space is concerned, you may have Sento now decide to even go into the transport business and then when it suits them, they may also decide to even buy the local fuel station so that once they are done refining, they don't need to sell to anybody. They can get, I mean, companies across the value chain and ship products to the, the filling station for right, you and I to buy. All right, that will be a dangerous thing if we don't take care. Away from energy-related stories, Director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research of the University of Ghana, Professor Peter Corte, has expressed optimism in the further cuts of policy rates in 2024. This comes after the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana cuts its key lending rate to 29% from 30%. Professor Corte said he expects inflation to decline for a further cut in policy rate. He was speaking to my colleague, James Deshen. It's about consultancy. It's about new areas to engage. Even <clears throat> it's about the way we train our students, our curriculum development. All of this will come out very well if we engage each other and i think that's what we are doing and we're going to deepen that that uh, collaboration now prof let me come to the policy rate we saw 100 basis point cuts with respect to the policy rates we've seen fetch also averaging 18 percent for the year 2024 looking at various indicators what's the best way for it is it feasible what fetch is predicting well it depends i mean um We've seen the rate of inflation gradually come down. We have seen exchange rates relatively being stable. Um, we've seen some positive growth rates and inflation expectations uh, coming down gradually. So with all of that, uh, you would expect that the policy rate will be revised downwards. My initial prediction was to have it between 100 to 200 basis points. You don't want to do a massive cut because... Uh, there are some inherent pressures that may come. Uh, one, we've seen increase, gradual increases in global oil prices on the, on the global market. We are seeing, and we don't know whether it might come down or might go up. Uh, we are also seeing um, some new taxes that may likely be introduced. Um, uh, you know, that can also fuel indirectly fuel inflation. So, uh, and, and I believe the Bank of Ghana also looked at the liquidity situation in the economy. You want to balance this carefully. And therefore, I, don't ex I wasn't expecting a massive cut in the policy rate. Uh, but then not reducing it at all too wasn't an option in my view because uh, the lending rate is still high for business. Cost of doing business is already high. So you want to do something to cushion them a little bit. And I believe this is, is the first step. Um, and, and I believe gradually when things improve, uh, we should see more such cuts to bring down the lending rates and, and thereafter, thereafter the cost of doing business. Talking about taxes, um, there's this call from the business community with respect to their calling for a reduction in taxes. And we have in the IMF also call for more taxes. What is the best way? How do we sort of manage the two? I personally um, don't encourage increases in taxes in this particular moment because already the cost of doing business is high, cost of living is, is high, and uh, in as much as we need to raise revenue, I don't think um, the only way to raise revenue is to increase taxes. If we make tax collection more efficient, I believe we can rake in more revenue. If you make taxes affordable, 
and enforce the tax regulations, more people will pay tax, your total tax revenue will increase. So I want us to explore the other options. I know GRA is doing so, but we need to explore those options uh, further. I've seen some numbers and uh, I, I hear they have uh, been able to increase tax collection uh, by so much. But I, I think we also look at it in terms of its real value. Uh, inflation has been high. So if you have increased tax revenue by 30% and inflation is uh, 26 or 20 something percent, so in net terms, how much have you increased revenue? I mean, those are some of the discussions that we ought to have. Yes, and as much as we see increase in tax revenue, um, we, we, we ought to be careful in celebrating that increase uh, because we have, if we have increased taxes and businesses are suffering and uh, uh, households are also, are also uh, you know, feeling the pinch, we shouldn't be celebrating. Rather, I think we should celebrate if we make tax collection more efficient and, and also very affordable. The Ghana Institution of Engineering has bemoaned the hack in cement prices in recent times. According to the institution, this is affecting the operations of some of its members. President of the institution, Engineer Kwabna Bimpong, has therefore called on manufacturers and other key stakeholders to find solutions to challenges culminating in the increase of cement production. He spoke to Joy Business at the 52nd Presidential Address of the institution. The president for the Ghana Institution of Engineering, Engineer Governor Bimpon, recommended the use of affordable building materials, such as the use of bio-based materials like timber, bamboo, and improvement on non-renewable building materials such as green cement. We need to look at various options in providing sustainable um, housing delivery, and these must be affordable. So we have looked at providing or using bio-based materials and these include bamboo which is a renewable resource and we know that bamboo sequesters about 60% of carbon dioxide and we also know that bamboo grows very very fast, one meter a day. For all of us we know that bamboo, we always think our bamboo as being for support or scaffolding. Very much so because look um, as I mentioned, 80% of our building materials are imported. And remember that the materials that are used in the production of cement are also imported. That is why I'm talking about the fact that if you are able to replace 20%, even 20%, if you are able to replace 20% and we are able to reduce the cement prices by you know, some good percentage, I think that we'll all be happy because, look, apart from water, cement or concrete is the most widely used material on earth. The 52nd presidential address was under the theme sustainable housing supply with alternative building technologies. That's how we draw the curtain tonight on Prime Business. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is Prime Sports, but do have a good evening.